Now look, as a common person, how is quantum physics gonna be affecting my daily life and what do I need to know? I mean, these days we're carrying around yeah. things that use it all the time, I guess the sun itself, but what are some things that we should know and maybe even prepare us for the future, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now when it might make more of a difference in our life? So there's the answer that I kind of am tempted to give and then the, the better answer that I should give. The answer I'm tempted to give is we're trying to do this just because we want to understand the fundamental nature of reality. It's not going to make you a better iPad, a better cure for cancer, a better TV set. The technological implications of quantum mechanics, we can do. We can do those already. The kinds of things, questions that I want to know about, you know, are there, is there multiple worlds out there? What happened at the Big Bang? These have no direct implications on how we will live our day-to-day -day lives. I think that's a fair and, and true answer. But the other thing is, you know, advances in understanding do come along with advances in technology, even if they're unanticipated. Yeah. You know, the idea that you can build a quantum computer, for example, which Feynman was one of the first people to point out, um, this might be crucially important to future technology. You're not gonna probably have a quantum smartphone or anything like that, but if quantum computers can break codes or uh, simulate complex physical systems that couldn't otherwise be simulated, that might be revolutionary for computing power. And how does a quantum computer work differently than what we currently have? Just if you had to explain that. There's, there's a couple things going on. One is if you just have a bit, right? A classical computer pushes around bits, ones and zeros. Quantum mechanics says, rather than a bit, you have a qubit, very clever name for a quantum bit, okay? But what it means is, instead of a one or a zero, you have a combination of one and zero. You can be almost all one, very little zero, or vice versa, or any combination thereof. So you, in principle, every single quantum bit contains an infinite amount of information, because it's some number between zero and one, right? It's not just either one. The other thing is much more important, actually, the quantum bits can be entangled with each other. And this is something that, guess what? Einstein was the one who figured this out back in the 1930s, mm. that in classical mechanics and Newtonian mechanics, if you're talking about the solar system and you have you know, the sun and the moon and the earth, they all have their separate things. There's the sun, it has a location of velocity. The moon has a location of velocity. The earth has a location of velocity. In quantum mechanics, you have waves, but you don't have separate waves for the sun, the moon, the earth, this electron, that electron. There's just one big wave function for the whole universe. And that means that the state of these different little pieces of the world can be connected to each other, what we call entanglement. So you have two quantum bits, and they can be related to each other in an interesting way. And that just gives much more room for the computation to happen. There's much, many more things that can happen. It's not just, I tell you what that bit's doing, and I tell you what that bit's doing. I tell you what the system is doing. And there's all these combinations of what can be going on at once. And so one little quantum computer with, you know, 100 qubits can have an enormous amount of information stored in it, way more than a classical computer can. And if we can learn to manipulate that information effectively, it, it would open up a huge vista for computing power. And then with a massive amount of computing power like that, a lot of things become possible. That's right. And also you can use quantum mechanics to you know, uh, invent new ways of keeping things secret. Quantum cryptography, right. not just breaking other people's codes, but inventing your own. There's quantum money that can keep your transactions safe. There's a, it's much more safe than you know blockchain or something like that. Right, or um, finding some big prime number to yeah, encode things. Yeah, things like that. So we don't know exactly what the, um, quant what the quantum technology future is going to look like, uh, but we're getting there. That's definitely a frontier that is moving forward quite okay, rapidly. Okay, so it will be happening in the next 50 years. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and this was predicted, to, spoken about by Feynman and even by Einstein. In the past. Feynman, well, you know, Einstein sort of laid some of the conceptual foundation for it, as did Feynman. Um, people like David Deutsch, who's at Oxford, was one of the pioneers there. Okay. But now, like, every tech company has a quantum computing offshoot. Google, Microsoft, IBM, right? Uh, okay. And you can go online. IBM lets you do your own little quantum computation with like they have five qubits that you can manipulate or something like that.